Welcome to another Save Your Books Live video. I guess it's a live video. Anyway, um, hi, I'm Sophia Bogle of Save Your Books, and I'm going to be showing you what I'm going to do to restore this book. And this is kind of interesting because I'm the client. This is my old book that used to be my mom's, and I know that because they wrote on the uh, page here names and stuff. So that's, that's you know, typical kind of what makes the book special. So here we are, and I'm going to go between having the camera up, looking at me, and then going, looking down at my hands, and, and we'll be able to talk about the book more easily that way. The first thing I want to do is kind of talk to you about the construction of the book in the first place. So, I don't know if you can see that. The book is actually one of those where it's just one signature that's been sewn through the middle like that and then the last page of it or the first page depending on how you look at it is just glued to the board to make the paste down and so that's that's the structure of it it's you know it's typical of a lot of old older books like this and it's a little tricky to restore because of not having a, a, a specific hinge or um, a, a real spine to work with uh, but we're gonna do we're gonna restore it anyway that's how that goes all right so let's see I've got this and um, I actually drew I don't know if you can see this there I drew a picture of kind of what it looks like. I hope that makes some sense. Just kind of what we're dealing with. This part right here, that just indicates that there's some mull or muslin, um, some kind of a liner that's un underneath, that was wrapped around the signature to be glued down for the strength of the hinge. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deconstruct the book so we can find out what's going on and then make some decisions. So I'm going to put the camera down. We'll look at the book a little more closely. Let's see. There we go. All right. Now, I may not catch all your questions as you ask them, but I promise I'll get around to answering all of them eventually. And I'd li like to remind you all to please share, there's probably a button or arrow or something down there, share this with friends if you um, are interested in, in promoting this book restoration thing. All right, so here we are. And um, this is going to be a fairly simple book to re-sew because it's one signature and I can just, you know, kind of go in and out the holes. So the first thing I'm going to do is to actually cut the book out of here instead of trying to preserve what's going on. All right, so, so now I have two pieces. I have the text block and the cover. And it's, at this point, kind of with restoration, you kind of go, which one am I going to work on first? And some ways it doesn't matter very much. Um, usually I kind of go back and forth between. So in this case, I think I just want to take a look at the cover. So I'm just going to set that aside for now. And I'm going to do a little more deconstruction, cutting through the mull. And I have to cut through the paper here. It's sad because I'm going to lose just a, a bit of the illustration. Um, there are ways to get around that. Like if this book were worth thousands of dollars, I could soak these pages off, um, re, you know, strengthen them from the back, and then put it all back exactly like it was made. But because I'm the client and I don't want to, I don't know, spend the time to do all of that. I just want to get it back to, you know, a state where it can be read again and it's not quite as gross as it is now. There's actually food particles and stuff on here I'm going to wind up cleaning off later. So let's see, just taking this apart. 
when you're cutting them all, you have to make sure to not also cut the spine, although in this case I may wind up separating the whole thing. But here we go, you can start to see that's just peeling right back. It's just the glue has released all along there and along there. So now you can really see it's like it, as a normal case construction is board, spine board, and the other board. And this board is is falling to pieces. There's actually the usual thickness has um, disappeared entirely from, from here. So I'm going to need to replace the spine so I can just kind of, you know, save this so that I have the exact width that I need. Just keep that piece. And further deconstruction. Just kind of scraping away here. Let's see. I'm getting curious to see if um, people have any questions. And this might be my way to do this. Okay. Oh, look, it's me. All right. Hey. All right. I don't see any questions. That's awesome, though, that people are out there. And I'm going to just continue here. So what I've got... Let's look at the front part of it. This is pretty shot, the spine. The, you know, once again, it could be completely restored, kept all together. Um, but I think that the best thing to do would be to replace this spine. It's just this little bit of book cloth, and I can get a different piece of book cloth and, and put that in and, and, you know, lifting up along here to, to get that in. I think that's going to be the best way to go about this. So because I know that I'm going to be, um, you know, putting this new piece of book cloth in, I'm like, okay, so that means I'm taking this whole thing apart. One of the things to think about before you deconstruct your book is you might want to make a template for the spacing. For instance, here I've got this, and if I just want to know what this space is later, without having to create it and figure it out. All I have to do is get a piece of paper, make a pencil mark. It's actually better to use a pencil and paper rather than a ruler. If you go like this, you can go, yes, that is pretty much exactly three quarters of an inch. But if you forget and write down the wrong thing or write three quarters, but you can't read your handwriting later, um, this pencil mark it can't be, you know, misconstrued. So I'm actually going to do both here, three quarters of an inch. And that is the space between boards. So now I'm just going to keep this in kind of my pile of stuff for the book. Set that there for now. And the other thing I would do before I would deconstruct things, if there was a title here, I might make a note as to where it started from the bottom of the page, there's where the title starts, something like that. Just so you don't have to wonder about it later. Another thing to do is to take a photo um, of the whole situation. And I've already got a photo, um, so I don't need to take another one. But that's where I'm at with that. So further deconstruction. Hmm. Well, this is going to be the easiest way to do it. And it's kind of, it's kind of a shocking thing, but I'm just cutting the book apart. And then I'm going to sand the edge rather than try and use the knife to cut or anything. Oh, well, well, typically I would sand the edge to cut it like that and just, you know, get, get that all off. Makes a nice, neat edge. But I've already said I'm going to replace this entire thing. So what I really want to do is to, you know, remove that. And I'm not sure how easily this paper is going to lift because I could remove the part of the book cloth that goes underneath the paper. I could do that. And it's one of those things, it's like if the paper is really fragile, that may cause problems. I may want to leave the paper and just cut up to it, even though that's going to make a thicker edge right there where the paper is. Now see this is just 
coming right up. I'm just sliding my knife under there. Super easy. I don't even, don't even have to work at this. When I'm holding the knife, you have to at least focus on the direction is down and then forward and kind of like, you know, like that. Uh, this is a better way to do this. Kind of holding the board up in the air and trying to do this in the air is not a good idea, actually. Keeping it up against the edge. Alright, so that's got that whole edge lifted. And now I can kind of examine the, the paper and see, see if it's going to be easy to lift the paper off of the book cloth. And it's certainly possible I can do it. As you can see, with, with my knife, I mean, I sell, I sell this knife on my website, it, um, like this, it's the book repair knife, and the great thing about it is that it's not pointy like an X-Acto knife, it has a little bit of a rounded edge, and that means that when I'm doing things like this that it's less likely to poke through. Okay, so I guess I'm just going to see if I can get this off nicely, may as well. Sometimes the book will just go for it. You kind of have to work with whatever the book's willing to do. Switch my glasses be a little better. Whenever I have problems in one area, even if they're just small problems, I'll just switch the area that I'm working in or the angle so that I can come at it a different way or come back to it. And it's always good to check the knife for burrs. Oh, there's a few burrs on there. That's good. And this is just you know, one way to touch it up. It's the 320 grit sandpaper. It's not ideal, but it'll get rid of the burrs. And good enough. When you do that, though, make sure your fingers get cleaned off afterwards because the metal from the knife is, you know, will be black on your fingers and then you're touching your book. That could be a bad thing. All right. All right, now before I go too much further, I actually wanted to ask you guys a question. Because I'm thinking that while this, I'm going to fully restore this book with you guys. You're going to be here for the whole thing. Um, I'm wondering what you might like to have for the next thing. So I wanted to show you the books that I'm considering. Here's one of them. So I want you to vote on these. So I want you to vote on whether or not this is the book that I restore after the one I'm working on. Or... Let's go with this one. So this is a book cloth book with no spine at all. And several issues like this tape. Um, the sewing's really loose, although I think that'll be pretty easy to fix. There's some pages that are falling out. Um, but yeah, it would just be like putting a new spine on this book, basically. Or... And here's the other one. So vote for fairy tales or vote for Mrs. Browning's poems. And this one is um, leather. And it is missing a good chunk of the spine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new spine on out of Japanese tissue. I'm just going to remove all of this. Sadly, I mean, because I don't have the whole thing, I don't even think I'm going to save it. I have a piece of it, but I don't have the whole thing. And so replacing the spine with a new Japanese tissue um, piece, and then I'll have some sort of label. And so once again, it's kind of a new spine for the, for the fairy tales or a new spine for the poems. And 
I'm not going to be doing this in leather. I'm going to be using Japanese tissue for the new spine. And this is uh, the book cloth. All right, vote away. Fairy tales versus poems. I just comment, let me know, and that'll be the one we're going to work on after this, this children's book that we're working on now. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. Here we are. It's easy to get carried away and go, oh yeah, this is going great, and then just find a spot that's a little more stuck down and, and cut a hole in it or whatever. might be the watching paint dry part for you guys. All right, there we go. And now this should just kind of pop right out. And you can see how far it went underneath that paper. But now the whole thing's gone and I don't have to, you know, worry about putting a new piece down. Then you have to kind of feel it and make sure there are no lumps under there. Sometimes you have to tap it because there are things that are just like stuck under there. All right, so that's one way to do that. And then here's this. I may as well show you the other way. I mean, the other way is just to cut it. Line it up. There you go. So that's another way to do it, much faster, as you can see. But what you get is you get that little blue line, and yes, I could have cut into the paper, I suppose. Um, so there's just, you know, it's, it's a nicety. More of a restoration rather than a repair technique to remove the whole thing. And I'm definitely going to go in and remove this, but now, now that it's cut, it's actually going to be harder to do, but still I would go under the whole thing first. for burrs. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, and then getting the paper once again. And I think it's just a little harder to do after that bit's been cut. But it's not bad. I can get it. All right, maybe I'll save that for a little later, or I might do that, you know, without without the video, because I've already done it once. You've seen it. All right, what's next? Well, and this is something I could have done before I started the whole thing, but um, cleaning. Cleaning's pretty important, and as you can see, this is pretty dirty. So let's work on this cover. And 
just see what, what happens with different cleaning processes. So this, it's just paper. It's not any kind of a plastic um, at all. And so I can't really like spray it with um, Windex or, or 409 or anything like that. That would not work at all. What I've got here is a lot of um, dirt and stains and I have to decide, I mean, um, to Kathy from Josie, that I actually don't want to remove that because that's my aunt and that's my great aunt, I think. Um, and so I don't want to remove that. Normally I'd be like, oh yeah, get an eraser out and just start erasing, but that's not really going to work. So in this case, I think what I'll do is get a little dry cleaning pad just to get some of the real basic dirt off. I think that this book is just going to be, it's just going to look a little dirty when it's done. This should not remove the, the, the words unless I scrub really hard. These, um, these document cleaning pads are for documents, typically, but every once in a while there is a book application, like we're doing here. And as you can see, I just kind of squeeze some of it out, and then just circles. this is true, that my, my great aunt Josie um, taught elocution and manners and things like that um, in San Francisco or Berkeley or something like that. Family members, you can correct me. Okay, so it doesn't do a heck of a lot. It just... You know, you can feel better knowing that you have scrubbed some of the dirt off. <laughs> that's, that's about it. So now I'm going to look more carefully at some of the specific stains that maybe I would want to have gone. Like, you know, this. So what, I'm feeling the whole thing going, are there any lumps and bumps? There's no actual lump things. It's just this weird staining. I want to see if this will come off with scraping, so I'm just gonna, yeah, look at that. Once again, this knife is really perfect for this because it doesn't have a point on it, it's got a rounded edge. And whatever's on there, it's kind of caked on and it's kind of popping off as I'm scraping this. Very, very lightly. These are great. This is an anti-static brush. You can get them at different um, archival kinds of stores, conservation places like, you know, Talus or uh, University Products. I believe they have it anyway. So that's getting there. And now, just to try something else to see what'll happen, um, I've got some 320 grit sandpaper. And this could be a total disaster, but I'm going to try it out and see what happens. Oh, where did you get your knife? What brand is it? Okay, so I, I, um, I see that there's a question about the knife. And the knife is something that I designed and my, my father-in-law makes them for me and I sell them on my Save Your Books website. They're, a, I don't know, they're less than $20 and um, 
they're just that's what I use for everything that's like if I had one book repair implement that would be it so there you go um, but you could also just you know get a kitchen knife and shape it yourself it's it's really it's flat on one side and then it's got this really long bevel on the other side and it's just that rounded bit so oops wrong way okay so with the after the scraping I'm just doing this really delicate sanding and yeah it's removing the color so it's not not the best but maybe for a really dark stain like this odd thing I wonder what that'll do to that let's find out removing it but I don't know if I'll be able to re remove that and nothing else you know color wise it's a uh, you know six of one remove it it just looks worse <laughs> so so in cases like this sometimes leaving the stains are just the best thing you just there's no way you're gonna make it better I'm willing to, to do this to show you what not to do because it's my book and that's there's your answer it's like I don't think I'm gonna scrape or erase or sand anything else on here because it's just it's making it look worse I don't like the way that looks in fact and this is once again maybe something not to do but let's find out and I'm <laughs> I'm a little more cautious with other people's books, but this is my books, and I want to and I want to show you, you know, maybe something's going to go wrong. So I've got a, a damp um, paper towel here, and I'm like, hey, what's going to happen if I just wipe that area? What I'm hoping is going to happen is that some of the color from the rest of the page will help blend into it, and it won't look so scraped anymore. But it might just make it worse. Let's find out. It could also actually clean off the dirt. You've got a window, and I'm winding up doing the whole thing because I don't want to create a tide line of stains. Well, there you can see it's moving some of the color. So strange to use water on this. Okay, and I apologize, but I'm going to have to use a hair dryer um, because I don't want to leave the moisture on here for very long. That's not a good idea. So, I'll just do it over here really quick. Okay, sorry, in my videos I always take all the hair dryer noise out as much as possible. So that's interesting. You know, it definitely, it didn't ruin it. It didn't destroy it. Water was a possibility. I don't know if it looks cleaner. I want to compare it to the front just a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I hate what I did here with the scraping. That was not a good thing. So, yeah, definitely not going to do very much scraping on this. All right, let's go to this button. You know, these inner pages are a little different, and I'm wondering if, if I can do any scraping on these. I wonder what what will happen here. I don't know. The whole thing is colored. It's, it's one of those things. All right. Well, let's talk about the crayon now, because we've got this crayon here. There's a lot of red crayon throughout the whole book, actually. I'll show you some of the other pages. So somebody had a red crayon. Might have been me. I'm not saying it wasn't. So um, I've done some research on crayons. I have done some removal of crayon from pages. What I find is that when you have a thick page, um, that you can get away with some of the scraping. But if it's on top of an illustration, there's only so much you can do. Um, let's let's just check on this. So. Typically what you would do first is to scrape, and I've read uh, websites that, you know, recommend using an X-Acto knife or a scalpel. I think those might be a little too sharp. 
I, I like this knife. Um, you just when you have a point on the end of your knife, you're you're more likely to make a irreversible scrape. So let's just work on this little stocking here and see see what this is going to do. So it's getting some obvious crayon back up off of the paper, for sure. The reason you want to scrape is that you don't want to, um, oh, any certain brand of eraser. There's another question. So my absolute favorite eraser is the Statler Mars. Um, the, that document cleaning pad that, you know, it's good for certain things. Um, this is my this is my go-to. I've actually read that a kneadable eraser is good for this, and I think that the reason is that it sticks and then comes up, and so that that is good. And I was looking for one, and I thought I had one. I did not have one in the shop, but I also wanted to show you that you can also use this blue low tack tape, and after you've scraped, just kind of go like that and. You can get off some of the um, crayon that way. And so that, I mean, you're going to wind up doing it over and over and over again, but that is one thing to do. And of course, you might start removing bits of the page, so you really have to be careful. You see how I'm pulling this really close down to the page? If you pull up, it might grab at the, the paper more thoroughly. So I've done that a couple times. Now I'm going to scrape a little more, see what I can get off. Um, the, re uh, the reason you don't want to take an eraser directly to this, for instance, um, let's grab that, my favorite eraser, my white eraser here. And once again, I'm willing to do this. This is not something I would do to anybody else's book. But um, if you try to erase this little red sock here, Oh wow, that's actually working pretty well. Now sometimes what can happen is that that'll wind up smearing or and you're pushing the crayon into the paper. So once again, best to scrape first, but then you can try other other things like like this eraser, which I'm going to try on this sock, this sock, this page, this illustration of a sock on the page. Alright, since that worked so well on there, I'm going to try it on here as well. Hmm. Well, I would say that looks better. It's still there. I mean, it, you can't, you can't say it's not there. And I don't know if I can get off enough to have that red completely disappear because the red has basically started dyeing the paper and the only way to get it out of there is to remove the fibers that are red. Which is maybe not really possible. So let's do that again. Let's do a little more of this just because. But something that I could do to help make this look better because it's in gray, black and white, whatever, I could take a pencil, which is looks like the right coloring, although, you know, it's a pencil and could be erased easily. I could also go with um, a colored pencil. Kind of pencil, colored, colored pencil. And, you know, just kind of fill in what was going on there. And when you do that, you can just kind of, you know, make the red less obvious. Try not to do too much, though. And this is something, once again, you got to talk to the client. Do they really want that? Um, but like here, filling in this line just a little bit can help make that look less 
less there. So that might be as good as we're going to get for that particular stocking there. I don't think that, hmm, I don't know. I don't think that scraping first and then using the eraser in this case made a big difference, but I know that it can on other papers. Oh, okay, I see. Yes, can you use heat to remove wax crayon? Yes, um, you kind of can. And if you want to, I'll do that right now. Let's get that going. Um, where's my little heater? There it is. All right, so I've got a little tacking iron. You can use any kind of you know, iron. Try not to use any that have holes in it where steam might suddenly pour out onto your book or water that was there for the steam. All right, I've plugged that in. That's going to get hot. I'll move all of this over so you can kind of see the iron a little better. There we go. All right, so what you want to do to remove crayon with heat, and let's see, what shall I work on? Oh, let's work on the third stocking. So first of all, you want to scrape, just like we've been doing. You really want to make sure you don't have any burrs on your knife when you're scraping because the burrs will just, you know, scratch the paper. That just means it'll, it's, you know, it's rough to the touch. So you want to sharpen it a bit. I have a video on knife sharpening somewhere out there. Okay, so there's that, and it's not perfect. And then just paper towel or some other kind of, uh, you know, paper. Paper towel works like newsprint. Unprinted on newsprint would be okay. All right, so. All right, it's hot. So now I'm going to iron the stocking. Let's see what that did, if anything. That did nothing much except, I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of warped the page a bit. Now the, now the page is like kind of wonky. Yeah, it's really, like I push down here and then this part pops up. So that's, that's a thing. Um, I'm sure that it'll straighten out as it um, uh, is pressed later on in the book. I'm not too worried about the warping right now, but that's, you know, it's kind of a problem. It's something to, you have to watch out for. Now, one thing that could happen while I'm doing this is that this red from the crayon could migrate through the page. So while heat can work, you also have to really, like, watch out for it and be careful. So let's see. I'm going to try and do that one more time just to see if I can get anything off of there. So what's really happening is that the red from the crayon, the wax, is, it's you know, it's, it's going into the page. It's also coming up into here, but it's kind of doing both. All right, I'm not getting, ooh, ah, that is really hot. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to really make sure I had, I gave it kind of a chance to do that. Um, now I'm curious to see what will happen if I go directly on this part that I have not scraped. So let's, you know, Let's just find out what happens. I'm not going to hold it on there very long, though. Okay, so now you can see there's a little bit of red coming off. But that's just much better to scrape off. So the whole book, the whole page and all that, is, um... I think, I think it'll look better if I scrape off the red and so that that is something that I'm that I'm going to do. Let's see. I'm making I'm making notes for myself of stuff that I can finish later that you've seen some of. So scrape. 
crayon and um, lift a uh, cloth from the board. Okay, so I can do those things not together. All right, so that's all about the crayon. We have 15 minutes left and I'm going to unplug this iron so I don't get burnt. Let's see, where's that? There we go. Let's set that aside. And long as we're at it here, I'm going to remove this old sewing. You know, it would not surprise me if this had just been like, you know, zoomed through a, a sewing machine. That's kind of just what it looks like. Very, very fast way to sew a book. And this very center page has a little bit of, um, you know, there's some, there's some tears. Here we go. That's what I was trying to show you. Right there. So I'm definitely going to want to re repair the, the back of the signature before I would sew this. And I'm, I'm just going to look through all of them. There's some more threads to see which ones need to be restored. And before I um, add anything, before I would put any tissue or anything on here, I definitely want to do whatever cleaning is going to be done. So I'll be doing some more, what in the world is that? Something fuzzy. Okay. So yeah, so I'll be doing any cleaning first and then, and then um, repairing that signature. So, but I could do that right now maybe. Let's see. All right. I don't know what this brown stuff is in here, but I'm just making sure it's not, you know, substantial or sticking there. So that's not too bad. And on the back here, all right, that's not too bad. Now, because it's illustrated, I definitely want to restore it with something pretty darn thin so you can see through it. Um, let's see. I'll just get this board. And here's the hinging tissue that I sell. Uh, oh no, this isn't that. This is a kind of hinging tissue. I sell a different kind that has various widths. Um, but this is also this is the same kind of thing. I got this at Talis, and it's just really useful. What I want to do is I just want to take one of these strips and just, you know, paste it on here to strengthen it. Now, this is something, if you had um, archival repair tape, I suppose you could just put that on there. That is one way to go with this. But I, I really do prefer the... Japanese tissue and paste because you can move it around if you've got it in the wrong spot. And that makes all the difference sometimes. Alright, so I'm not too fussed about getting that exact yet because I can trim it down afterwards. And I've got my paste in here. And this is the, the nori paste. Which, like that, nori paste. And you just have to have something to paste it out on. I save all these magazine things people send me. And I do water down my paste a little bit um, for something like this. But you don't you don't have to. You could just use it directly out of the out of the container, the jar, whatever. All right. And it doesn't need anything stronger than that. Um, you can use a Teflon folder to rub that down, um, or just, you know, have a piece of Mylar around and you can rub down through that with a regular folder. You just don't want to rub 
directly on such wet tissue. It, it'll r ruin it. It'll move it around. One thing after that's done, you can use um, baking parchment. This is just one way to dry it faster. Make sure you don't use wax paper. If you iron through wax paper, you will ruin your page, your book. There we go. So that just helped it get a little, a little drier. And then you can just trim. each side. Hard to do that trimming if it's not perfectly dry. Okay. Alright. Yes. So there we go. Now that's stronger. I can actually sew through that whole thing now. That's good. All right, here's that food I was talking about. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's not food. But anyway, it's something that definitely needs to be scraped away. And here as well, it's just something there. Oh, by the way, on these knives, you can order a left-handed one. The point will be on the other side. I forgot. I don't even think I have that on my website. I will fix that. I'm going to make a note. Note. Left-handed knife. What would we do without lists? All right. Okay, so that's better. All right, what's next? So... Yeah, that's not going to be hard to do. Oh, I see um, the remnants of some tape, this really old tape here, and it's rough. I mean, like I can feel it and it's sticking up, so that leads me to believe I can scrape it and make it look better. Not always the truth of the matter, but worth giving it a shot. Scraping, it's just getting off some of the, you know, acidic materials. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to do with that. That's not very good. All right, so what's going to happen with this? And I'll, I'll do this probably on the next one. I'll get things ready. So, as I mentioned in that before, like this page was originally, you know, wrapped around and then it just got glued down. But we don't really have that option easily right now. So we're going to go with a different option. And what that is, is that um, I have to put down um, two layers on this and sew through them so that then they'll get tucked in there and this will get put down over them. So the first thing I want to attach here is whatever I want to see when, you know, in the little margin that's going to wind up being there um, in the thing. And so I think that what I want is just a little bit of Japanese tissue that I'm going to try and mimic this white color or just go with white. I could go with the blue or some other color. Um, but what I've got here is some Japanese tissue that I have dyed. Oh, wait, let's see. Uh, no, no, no. Here's another question. I know you haven't shown this, but with our limited time, could you tell me your favorite book press you use? Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not quite sure which kind of press you're talking about. Um, but I've just got this press that I generally use to, like, to hold a book up. And other than that, I've got my... my you know, nipping press back here. So that's a 
backing press kind of, or a finish, that's a finishing press, um, and you can create it into a backing press. Um, yeah, let's see, I could also show you here, I'll come back up for a little while, we'll talk some more up here, hi, alright, so there's my backing press, job backer, and there's my regular nipping press, and then that wooden one I showed you, that's the, I keep it down there, so that's the one I would use mainly. And, um, yeah, weird angle. So that's, those are the presses, but, uh, yeah, you can do without presses. You can do most of the stuff without fancy presses. You can just use bricks and you can use clamps like these and just have a sim couple simple boards. And I have a video how to make a brick and board clampy press thing. So there's that. Anyway, so let's... I got you back up here. All right, so I colored this Sakishu um, to be a more mellow color. It's not pure white. Um, that's one way to go. I feel like it matches the page a little better. Um, and so I would, I would first of all cut a strip of that, and that's going to wind up getting sewn through there. So that has to be attached first. And then I'm going to attach a piece of muslin. And this is just regular old, you know, get a bolt of muslin or, you know, a yard of muslin from the uh, fabric store. And then that also will get sewn through here. And that's going to have to be for next time. But I'll, I'll get these all set up. And um, I'm going to glue them together and then put them on because it'll just make it easier. And then those will be put into, they will be, that'll be the new hinges. So, oh, and... Uh, Alana, you're welcome. Yeah. This, this live thing is pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> all right, so let's see what else. Oh, so I'm going to remind you all about your choices. You have to vote. Please vote. Make a comment. Um, vote for, because after we finish this uh, Christmas book, I'm going to re repair, I'm going to restore another book. Um, and one of them will be Mrs. Browning's Poems. This is leather, and it's going to get a new spine with Japanese tissue. And, you know, you could easily save the old spine and put it over, but it's, it's missing some, so. Or vote for fairy tales, book cloth. Oh, thanks, I see one vote for poems. Um, so this is book cloth, and once again, new spine. And this will just be the book cloth one. And this one has other issues, too. This has this terrible tape thing going on, so there'll be some tape removal. That's pretty bad. It's obviously missing some pages from the very front, but um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Oh, all right, great, yeah. And um, if you want to talk more about this stuff, uh, I am on Reddit. Call the the page is called the Bindery, and that's that's kind of a good place to start a conversation. So far, I may get another conversation place later, but that's that's kind of all I have going right now for conversation wise. Um, or email me, ask a question, um, info at saveyourbooks.com, and I'm happy to answer questions. And, oh, let's see, um, one of my uh, members, for a Sa uh, Save Your Books member, Michael, asked me specifically to answer this question. How do you fix this hinge? And so... I see, I see one vote for book cloth. Okay, we'll have to see what we can do. Anyway, I just wanted to tell Michael that this is going to be my next video for members on how to fix a book that's just got a broken hinge like this. And I'm going to do probably a couple different ways just to show how that works. So that's, that's that. And um, this has been really fun. Also, how often do you guys want these things? It's like, should I come back next week? Or, you know, every other week or once a month or, I don't know, I might just, uh, let's see, what is next week? Anyway, I'll look at my calendar, I'll put up a new um, thing that we can, uh, yeah, a new event, I'll put up a new event. It won't be too long, because I want to get this, you know, book done. I mean, it's, I know it's a Christmas book and I have until Christmas, theoretically, but um, I, it's fun to just get things done and, and really, really 
move on and move on to the next thing. So, and you know, while I've asked you to vote for the uh, poems or the fairy tales, I'll probably get to both eventually, but I'm definitely going to take whoever votes for the most one first and then, and then we'll get back anyway. Oh, all right. Well, that's, that's, uh, I feel like I'm running out of things to say at the moment. I've covered a lot of things and, uh, I really appreciate you being here and just really keep in contact. Let me know what's up and I will try to answer all the questions. So once again, thanks for watching.